Good evening and thank you for joining us. Well, that uh, tournament was a long time coming and it was kind of bookended by some pretty nasty weather, pretty bad storms before. We've kind of got a bit of a storm going on mm -hmm. now, but when the tournament was on, the sun was shining. It was, it was incredible. It was like everything, you know, sort of worked out as it was supposed to. Uh, you know, I know that even Kyle over at the golf course actually had to purchase some extra pumps just to get some of the water off the course so that the okay. guys could come out and play. But you know what? I, I had a chance to attend the banquet last night. Aaron Pritchett put on an unbelievable performance and it was a really nice way to wrap everything up and the fundraising was incredible. The, uh, the highest number, um, Clark MacArthur put out a, a trip uh, to Toronto for the lease home opener which we actually talk about a little later on in the cast and uh, it went for $18,500. Wow, fantastic. Yes. Pretty amazing. The generosity in the city never fails to amaze me. No, Definitely absolutely nice. incredible. Very well, much so. Look forward to that full story later on, Gerard, and a little bit of hailstorm going on out there, and I know a thunderstorm watch later on too. It sounds a bit more than a little bit, I tell you, because uh, Environment Canada put out the watch just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. And as we just started off the cast there, th this is what we're dealing with. Hail in the Midwest, hail in Lloydminster. It's coming down at that 25 degrees Celsius. A steady buildup of cloud cover just before all of that started. And the humidity continues to rise. The winds out of the southeast at 33 kilometers an hour. Also, what is happening for the battle for it's a severe thunderstorm watch has been out from since just at around lunchtime today. And and in the Midwest, we followed suit from just after 4 o'clock, as I told you before. In terms of how much rain and how much hail is going to be happening later on, we'll talk about that in our second installment. Yesterday, Edmonton police announced a break in the nearly five-year-old unsolved murder of Lloyd Minster's Dylan McGillis, who was swarmed and stabbed to death in 2006. A 23-year-old Edmonton man has been charged with manslaughter. The news was welcomed by his family, but offers little solace. For Dylan's father, Grant, after waiting so long without any word of progress in the case, yesterday's phone call was like a bolt from the blue. Shock, uh, a lot of different uh, reactions. Uh, you know, you're, you're relieved. Uh, I, shouldn't, I won't say happy, but you know, I'm glad that, it, uh, that they finally made an arrest. Uh, sadness, uh, everything rushes back. Dylan's parents have stayed in contact with the police assigned to the case and have held a vigil every year on the anniversary of their son's death. The police and prosecutor have told Grant that while more charges are possible in the future, for now, they're proceeding with manslaughter. My understanding is, is that that's uh, what they feel confident with, what the evidence supports. Um, their investigation, I was told, is still ongoing. They're still uh, trying to identify other people. And he's confident that now that one person's been identified, it's only a matter of time before others involved in the attack are found. There's not a lot of honor among thieves and that uh, faced with uh, charges that, uh, you know, things will keep coming forward as they go down the list. Grant fully intends to be at the court proceedings for the accused, despite the fact that it will be difficult to go through the details of his son's killing again. We do want to convey to the killer of what, what they've done to a lot of people, not only just Dylan. And, uh, you know, it, it, I guess... We want to make sure that, uh, that he's aware of Dylan and what kind of a person he was. And the people that Dylan touched and who've been there at the vigils every year refusing to let Dylan be forgotten are now calling Grant, happy to hear the first positive news in a long time. Grant is truly appreciative, but acknowledges how hard it's been to put on the brave face for his friends, for people he doesn't know but have offered their support, and for the media. It's difficult, but it's nowhere near as difficult as it was when he was murdered. Uh, after going through that, I mean, nothing else in this world really seems to be that tough. The accomplishments during the past year for the Libby Young Board have been positive and successful, as outlined at their latest annual general meeting. As they move into another year with a newly elected president and on-schedule progress with the new Libby Young Centre, there's a lot to be excited about. Kathy Lee has the details on how that new centre is coming along. After years of planning for a new mental health centre, the idea is finally coming to life. We um, broke ground um, in late May and we already can see the foundations going up for um, the basement of our new activity centre. So that's very um, exciting for all of us. It's a milestone board members are thrilled to see make a home in the border city to provide services to those who need it. But this is going to be um, just a wonderful facility that's going to provide excellent support um, to our future clients and their families who are struggling with mental illness. So um, enthused, excited, thrilled, uh, all of those. 
progress of the Libby Young Center was just one of the accomplishments addressed at the board's AGM. Over the last year, we've been able to expand our operations and open up a day program uh, for clients suffering a mental illness. Um, that they can come and we're starting to put in a variety of programming um, with um, client input. With funding from the government and Prairie North, the programs are taking place right now. So we were able to lease a space in town um, and start to actually get a program that's going to be staffed eight hours a day um, and into the evening to create some programs for mental health clients. Board members say the support for the new building and aid programs is an evolution towards breaking down barriers and stigma about those who suffer from mental illnesses. We really want to commend our staff and the efforts they're putting forward and also our board members in helping to educate the community about um, the individuals who are struggling with mental illnesses, what their challenges are, and what as a community we need to do to support them. Kathy Lee, New Cap News. The Lloydminster Public School Division Board of Education has approved the names of its two new schools. The new high school, Meridian Collegiate, has completed phase one and awaits ministerial approval to move to the design phase. College Park School will be situated in the center of College Park development and serve students from kindergarten to grade nine. College Park has been given design phase approval and they're now waiting on approval to begin construction. After the break, we'll hear the latest from Ottawa on the postal lockout and also what Lloydminster's Thorpe Recovery Centre is planning for their next year.